Today you're here at Sandcastle Head Conservation, which is based in Leicester in the UK. I've been in the lead industry since I left school at the age of 16. So the manufacturing started in 2017. Uh, I actually started the manufacturing myself, getting the equipment set up and actually teaching the guys. For the whole process of lead manufacturing, of Sankas lead, uh, we start with the raw material which comes to us in a scrap form. So the scrap lead, once it's melted and it reaches melting point, the highest we'll let the temperature rise to is approximately 400 degrees. We do this because we're staying under the threshold of uh, the lead giving off any vapours, any lead vapours. This makes it safe for everybody around within the factory and anybody working nearby. Any impurities or anything that we don't want in there will float to the top or we use a piece of equipment called a lead drosser, which is basically a spoon with small holes drilled in. We use this, we lift out the waste product, uh, the lead will drain through and we dispose of the waste product. We don't have to add anything. Generally, the lead itself and the idea for uh, Bouvet and any old building, historical building, we're looking to use the same lead. We tend to test it. We can have this test in the laboratory, which will tell us the purity of the lead. As long as it's not way out of what we expect, it will definitely be used. So we know it's a good material. We know it's going to be fine to go back and we expect it to then go and last another 100 years. Sand must be turned and rotivated. This is done by hand to guarantee that we get plenty of air circulation and the water that's added is mixed in well with the sand. Once this has been mixed, we then use the same tint with strickle. We'll then use the same strickle to smooth it over again. This is probably two or three passes to get the desired finish. And then we move on to the next stage, which is a copper plane. These are then used to spin out, to smooth over the sand. This is more like a, a plastering technique. So you're looking for very, very precise pressure to make sure it's nice and smooth. And we've got to make sure that the same pressure is applied all over the table. Make sure it's completely smooth. This allows the sand side to be perfect and the lead to also run smoothly down the table. Once the lead is poured uh, and we have a complete table, uh, a complete flat sheet, the table size is approximately 6.8 metres by 1.3 metres. We have a machine, a slitter. This is used to slice the sheet up to desired sizes. The waste at the side we call a swill, which is just what we get from the lead washing back. Once we've cut the sheets and they're rolled up, we remove them from the table. They're moved over to the scales. We then weigh them and we repeat this process every time. So it's very important that every sheet is weighed at the point of completion to know where we go for our next production. From the original scrap lead when it's received, the waste is very, very minimal and we do class it as a green material. A lot of people can say it's toxic, it's harmful, it's not good for the environment, but actually if you compare it against many modern materials, lead is actually very, very green and it, nothing goes into landfills and all the lead is reused and the waste, what you find once it reaches its very end product is, is very minimal, maybe 1% or even less. So we want to replicate what was used many years ago. So if the lead was recycled on site 100, 120 years ago, uh, it would have been done in this method and this process. So we try to replicate that. For myself and even for the guys involved, uh, it's very important and we're very proud of the company to work on these buildings. Uh, we know that it's gonna last a lot longer than our lifetime. If we're traveling, traveling the country, Europe, uh, we see many projects that we work on and it's always a, a, a great talking point to explain to your children, your wife, all oh, this is a project we're involved in and to explain it is a proud moment to stand at the bottom of a building which has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years and now be a part of protecting the hundreds of more years going forward for future generations.